Okay, so Brittany, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. So you are the creator of Farm to Table Mama. And the reason that we had you on was we started a new series called the Reimagine series. And that's us kind of reaching out to people who are taking homeschooling to the next level. And <laughs> so you and your family, you are not only homeschoolers, but you homestead. You just moved mm -hmm. to a new piece of property. You live in a camper uh, at the time. <laughs> Uh, at the time be for the for the time being and you have no electricity or water for the time being <laughs> so we saw your story and we're like well, this is really cool we were really into that kind of stuff and we thought it'd be great to speak with you and hear how you know what your life looks like and what it's like homeschooling your kids while homesteading so if you could just start off with like a, a short introduction about you and your family and kind of where you are now and then we'll go from there sure yeah uh, well, like you said, my name is Brittany. Um, I have been married to my husband for 10 years now. We just celebrated our 10 year anniversary in October. We have three kids, um, young learners. My youngest is getting ready to turn seven in just a couple of days on the 24th. And then our second son is five. And then we have a baby girl. Well, I still like to call her a baby, but she's actually 15 months old already. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but yeah, crazy. we have we have young learners and um, we've probably been homesteading now for five, going on six years. So that's pretty much half of our marriage. Um, and homeschooling just kind of goes right along with our lifestyle. It's not something that we planned really ahead of time. We started talking about homeschooling um, early on in our marriage before we had kids, but my husband and I both went to public school. Um, we had a good good experience when it comes to school. Uh, we went on to college and, you know, we don't have any complaints about our experience in public school, but there was just this pull, I think, towards homeschooling um, once we started having kids. And we just kind of, that's kind of something I can say with our lives. Whenever we feel that pull, we just kind of go that way. And that's kind of how we've ended up, you know, living in a camper uh, without any actual electricity and and <laughs> water <laughs> so we just kind of listen to those uh pools when we when we get them uh but yeah we we have a passion for um just being a close-knit family and being close to the land living um you know with the land and living off the land and growing our food knowing our food and just kind of keeping our family um in that rhythm and in the same rhythm of, of nature and going with the seasons. So that's kind of what we've based our, our lives on for the past five or six years. <laughs> hmm. so before we, before we jump into the next part here, I, I do want to bring up that just so people understand the, how you're living, you had to travel an hour to your mom's house to uh, even do this interview with us, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. We've, we've actually only been at our new property and living off the grid now for a little of, well, Tomorrow will be two weeks. Um, and our biggest issue right now is internet. We, uh, I don't want people to think that we're living in the dark or we're cold or, you know, we don't have water. Those things we have, we just have to go the extra mile to get them. We're using generator power right now while we work on uh, building our solar power. And we are, we do have water, but we have to haul it. So right. it's, takes work and you know we are working on the internet issue as well um a lot of people i think when you talk about living off grid they'll think that there's a hard line like you're not going to have internet you're not going to have running water you're not going to have electricity you can have all those things you just have to work for them so we're working on some internet um service right now it's just a little tricky there's some boosters and stuff like that that we're looking into because i mean let's face it it's 2020 and you really have to have internet to do anything these days mm -hmm. all your business is online so eventually we have to get connected we just have to find that happy medium <laughs> so we're working on it <laughs> So then while we're talking about your homestead, can you kind of paint us a picture of what that, what it looks like and how the, sure how many acres your animals yeah. are? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we went from five acres to about nine acres. We just moved to our new property and it's going to be about nine acres. Uh, we finally have some wood lots. Before we had nothing but pasture. Uh, we've raised Highland cattle in the past. 
We do pastured poultry every year. We do meat rabbits. Uh, I raise a bigger garden every year. It gets bigger every year. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of, it's kind of one of those running jokes in, in my family. But uh, yeah, we're just trying to be as uh, self-sufficient as possible when it comes to our food. Um, and that we're about like 100% um, self-sufficient as far as meat goes right now. Um, and then we're probably about 50 percent self-sufficient in other areas so we have room to grow and that's kind of what this new property is about um, when we made the big move we sold our home um, we paid off our debt and my husband left his job which I call corporate America he's been in management for probably six years up until now and he finally was able to leave that so that we can focus on building our homestead and just have more freedom and uh, really reach that level of self-sufficiency that we strive for. So that's kind of our goal. Can you talk a little bit about like before you started homesteading? Cause you, you know, obviously your husband had a, you know, a nine to five. I don't know if you mm -hmm. were working, but can you kind of paint us a picture of what your life looked like before you made this decision? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, we kind of played the middle road for a little bit. We tried to have the homestead and have the normal conventional life at the same time. And that was really a struggle because my husband's job was so demanding. Um, he just, you know, had to dedicate basically his whole life to his job um, because we required that massive income to sustain everything. And so I got stuck on this side, handling everything with the homestead and the farm and the kids. And I really didn't want to budge and let go of any of that because that's what we truly love. And I just knew that you know, later on down the road, if it, it'd all be worth it, if we could just stick with it. But eventually we came to a point in our lives where something had to give. We either had to give up the homestead or you know, he had to give up his job. So uh, 2020 came along and you know, it's just been a crazy year for everyone. And job insecurity, you know, was one of those things where everyone's job's not guaranteed anymore. Food security wasn't there anymore. So it was kind of a clear path for us to be like, okay, this is the push we need. And so we made the jump and made the decision to sell our home. And, you know, we're just gonna, we're gonna be free from now on. And that's just the way it's gonna be. Whatever we gotta do, whatever we gotta sacrifice. That's great. And then now you are living in a camper, right? Yes, that's temporary though. <laughs> so we're building our new home, um, but we're gonna build it debt-free. Um, and right now we are living in a camper. We're gonna have to winter through the camper. Uh, so that's gonna be an experience. Uh, so there is a sacrifice. We are also downsizing our home. We're going from uh, about 2,300 square feet to a thousand square foot home for a family of five. So I guess you could say, um, not only have we, uh, we've progressed into basically being, becoming minimalist, if you want to put a label on it, mm -hmm. uh, we're getting down to just what we need and what we love to have, uh, to be efficient and function as a family and, and be able to carry on the lifestyle that we want. I feel like that's the trending thing. Even with us, we've been talking about that. Um, we've kind of had different types of living arrangements because he's in the military so every time we move, you know, it, you, you have to look, okay, what can we find here to live that, you know, was in, is within our means and, mm -hmm. um, you know, meets these different things. And this time, you know, we're probably in, I mean, we are in the biggest house we've ever been in our marriage. Um, but then even after this, we're like, you know what, I think we could downsize on our next move. Because <laughs> you do, you start to find like, there's, there's upsides to to downsizing and I think because of this lifestyle that you create and for us it's it's been you know we've always we've been living on just I mean just an acre but even like that lifestyle paired with homeschooling has really changed our way of thinking and now we're finding what's like truly important and I'm like I could go back to yeah a small house where we're just like all together and mm -hmm. it's just a sense of coziness and you, you realize you don't need so much well to, exactly. clar to clarify when we say the biggest house we ever lived in not that it's not big and we, <laughs> we're very blessed to be in it but about 1900 square foot yes yeah, so it's not huge but it's no, the biggest for us biggest for us mm -hmm. and we came from a 
house was about 1300 square foot, mm -hmm. but that house also had an acre. And that was the first time we had space before that we lived on a base. And that's like, you can touch your neighbor, you know, um, <laughs> next door. Before that, it was kind of the same thing. Yeah. Uh, very, uh, just a, a, a house on a lot. And we have to deal with what we, wherever we, they send us. Right. So we, right. we don't have a lot of choices sometimes. And we have about 10 days to find a house. <laughs> so it's crunch time when that, when we, when we move. And, uh, the, but when we got that acre, I feel like our life changed. Mm -hmm. We've always been into the outdoors and that kind of stuff. But when we had that acre, we really started realizing what you could do with it and how you could change your life with it. And, uh, you know, that's kind of when I started making, start for fun, I started making my own wine. We started growing grapes. We started a garden. We got some chickens. The kids got into like going out there every morning. So it's like a progression. And then since then we said, there's zero way that I could ever go back to like living on a lot. Some oh, yeah. people are fine with it and that's okay. And not to, you know, talk down about it, but for us personally, and then like you said, 2020 has been hard for everybody, but if there's a silver lining in any of it, it's we realize that this is the lifestyle for us. And thank God we have this acre and some space for the kids because you can't go a lot of places. And now the kids are out there all day long and they, they really haven't noticed it, to be honest. But it, I mean, was there a moment for you guys that you realized that this is what you wanted to do? Like when you started doing the homesteading even when you were still working, you know, your nine to fives, did you just realize like, this is something we need to do and it's be great for our family? Yeah, absolutely. I think probably the first year in, um, and we started, which our first year homesteading was probably um, laughable. Really. My, I remember my garden was, I put it in a spot that, that I couldn't even get a water source to, <laughs> and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and, um, We've, we've grown since then, but the first, that first year, even what little tiny harvest I got, it really wasn't what we produced and what we got from that. It was the whole experience and the experience. My, my first son was very young at the time, but just seeing it through his eyes, just kind of, it was like a light bulb, like, okay, this is kind of how we want to be, you know, he's, he's engaged. Uh, we're doing things as a family and there's a sense of pride at the end of the day, even if you do have, you know, a little basket of produce, you know, you have a little herb garden in your window. I mean, there's just something about it. And I think it, 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 like it resonates with people who want to go that path or it just doesn't make sense to people <laughs> at, at the same time. You know, I know plenty of people like that too, who probably think that we're absolutely crazy for, for what we've done this year. I'm, my own family, I'm sure, <laughs> has some conversations about me when I'm not around. But yeah, there was definitely that moment about the first year in where we just wanted more and we wanted to grow. And that was ultimately the, the goal was to be able to get him home with us to do this more. Um, but it was just going to take such a long time. And we, we started following, I'm sure you've heard of Dave Ramsey, um, in order to, you know, kind of condense our debt and get down to where he wouldn't have to have such a large income. We were on the, you know, the long haul for that until 2020 came along. And we realized that we really needed to kind of accelerate this deal. And that's exactly what we did. <laughs> well, so I just want to jump on it since you brought it up now, but so one of the things we did find interesting about your journey is your, your story of moving to this debt-free living. So can you kind of um, explain how that process has worked for you guys? And then what is your, how you're going to continue on that, that goal? Sure. Yeah. Um, debt-free living was something that when, when we first got married and probably even now people, people think that a lot of people we come across think that it's not possible. We've been told that by lots of people, you have to have debt to live, you know, comfortably. Um, and we thought that too, in our, you know, the beginning of our marriage. Uh, and so we started out by, you know, having the normal amount of American dream debt. We had a mortgage, we had a couple of vehicles, we had our student loans, we had, you know, a couple of credit cards that we would use around the holidays, just that typical American life. 
and things were fine. My husband had a great job that allowed us to, allowed me to stay home and homeschool our kids. Um, but we went through an unexpected financial crisis, I guess you would say, um, and that kind of made us change our minds. And what happened was we were just, like I said, we had the typical American debt, but we ended up having a string of bad luck where we had vehicles break down. We had things in our new home that we purchased break down and had to be replaced. And there's just wasn't the, the cash flow for all of that. So we got behind on things, deeper and deeper behind, which is very easy to do um, if you're just kind of trying to keep up with the Joneses. And so very quickly we got in over our heads and we almost lost it all. We almost lost everything that we had. Uh, luckily, we were able to climb our way out of it, although it took a lot. And it took, you know, about a year and a half to even just get caught up where we weren't so worried about losing everything. And uh, that's when we decided to, to get on with um, Dave Ramsey and start working towards that. And then we just had this crazy opportunity to accelerate everything. So we sold our home. And um, luckily, that actually happened pretty fast because it was my brother who bought our house, actually. <laughs> so we didn't have to go through the process that, um, you know, everybody else would. Um, and we bought this piece of land for a really great price. And I will say now, the reason we got it for a great price is because it's 100% undeveloped. Sure. <laughs> so we have to basically do everything to it. So it's going to take a lot of work to own some, we will own it free and clear and we will own our house free and clear, but we have to really dig deep and do the work ourselves. You know, we're going to have to develop everything and in, including building our house, typically, you know, 100% by ourselves instead of the, you know, we have a couple things that we'll contract out, but you know, what, what we can do, we're going to do, and it's going to take longer time and like I said we are sacrificing space we're condensing our space going from 2300 square foot to a thousand square foot and that's how we're going to do this without financing so there is sacrifice with it mm -hmm. of course so I'm glad you brought that up because I this is a homeschooling podcast but we end up going <laughs> talking about all sorts of different things all the time and it's also just a, a podcast on life you know because that's part of homeschooling is everything that happens around you and we had a guest on, uh, Jennifer uh, DeRosa, and she wrote a book, Homeschooling for College Credit. And it's a lot about how to like um, get through college without debt. So we went down the Dave Ramsey you know, uh, tunnel and started talking about him. And we're well aware of Dave Ramsey. We have a lot of friends that um, go, you know, go through his program. And I, the, the thing that I find funny about his program is it's, the most, it's like the most simple concepts but the word that you used was sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that's the big part of that program. It's nothing, it's nothing crazier, you know, it's something people can't do, but it comes with sacrifice. That's the whole basis of the program. And most people aren't willing to do that. So when they, when, like you said, people tell you, there's no way you can do this. There's no way that you can do this. It's because people aren't willing to sacrifice something to make their life better, at, but they won't sacrifice in the moment. And it, it, I love hearing that what you guys did, because you're right. The, Amer the American dream has become being buried up to your eyeballs in debt. Exactly. You know, why can't you, there's people who say, how do you afford to homeschool? Well, be, you can't afford to homeschool. You think you can't because you need two jobs to, to keep your lifestyle up. Do you really need right. all those things? Do you need the big house, the two cars? We, we've talked about that too. Like, how do you financially, um, support a family that somebody stays at home and you have one income and you, you know and I was a registered nurse so we gave up a salary yeah a nice salary and when people ask us that oh, wow. it's it's exactly what you said it was it was a sacrifice we gave up like sixty thousand dollars a year just cold turkey like it was gone and mm -hmm. you know to hear your story how you went from Cause we know that's, that stress that comes from debt for people is like consu all consuming. It can oh, be yeah. like, it can just destroy a family, you know, being worried about money all the time. But most people don't need to be like that because they have things that they don't need. They're just not willing to give up. What, what, what like you said, keeping up with the Joneses, 
That's a mm -hmm. real thing. And most people do it. So for you, like, what was that? What was that discussion like between you and your husband when you realized like, look, we need to get out of this, we're going to give up the life that everybody thinks that they want and to go do what you're doing now to get out of it? Like, what was that discussion like? Because I know there, there has to be a discussion between a husband and a wife uh, and, a, and a family to make that, because that's, that's a big jump. So like, what did, what did that discussion look like? And how did, you, how did you like start it? You just like, just like that, you flipped the switch and sold the house or, or how did it go? I think that's ultimately something that we have been talking about over like a, several years. Um, and we just, we had so much debt weighing on us that we just couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. So we didn't entertain it realistically, I think for the longest time until we kind of started getting ourselves out of debt to where we could be like, okay, there is an end in sight to this. And once we saw that end in, end in sight, we realized we would have to make a major lifestyle change in order to never get back into a major debt situation. Um, you know, because if we would have kept our home, um, our, we had a 30 year mortgage. So when you're locked in for 30 years, things happen, things break down, things need replaced. So it's not like if we would have kept that mortgage, he would have had to continue making a certain amount of salary. The only, we realized very quickly, the only way we would have financial freedom truly is if we did not have a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much the, the pivotal point where we were like, okay, we need to get out of this. And in order to get out of this, then we have to sell and we have to go smaller, which was fine for us because we are just a family who would rather be outdoors, you know, working with the land and homesteading, raising animals and food than being indoors. So sacrificing the size of our home and you know, getting rid of that mortgage was just pretty much a no brainer. Uh, but we did have several discussions about the best responsible way to do this because we don't know anybody who has personally, who has done what we're doing. Um, and so we can't go to our friends and family and say, hey, we're thinking about doing this. What do you guys think? Because we're pretty much gonna get tore down with their opinions on that. So we kept it to ourselves for quite a long time. And then surprise, uh, our house is for sale. <laughs> so I'm sure that people think we're pretty crazy, but this has actually been, uh, you know, probably three or four years in the works, lots of conversations. Um, and homeschooling has really just kind of helped accelerate us to this level because once we started um, schooling at home, which I still have young learners, um, we realized that there would be nothing uh, worth it to us to give up our lifestyle. I wanna continue homeschooling. Uh, so me going back to work was really never gonna be an option. So that's one of the other factors that kind of pushed us towards, this is what has to happen. All right, so speaking of homeschooling, you guys said, early on in your marriage, you pretty much decided that you were going to want to do that. Right. And mm -hmm. you didn't really know anybody. It just kind of came up. <laughs> was... Yeah. I think, I think it really has to do more with our personalities. And if I really had to go back in time, I think it probably started, uh, when we were both in college, we have, um, a tendency to kind of look at systems and pick them apart and ask why, mm -hmm. uh, so when we were in the midst of pouring our money into the education system uh, in college, we looked, we started becoming very bitter. Why do I have to take this class if this is not going towards my major? Why am I spending thousands of dollars to do this when I really want to do that? So that kind of, I think, started our minds of maybe there is a better way. We personally, still to this day, do not know any homeschoolers, you know, face to face. Hmm. And that's a challenge. But we have really just, we started doing our research when we decided that we wanted to start a family and we, we would go back and forth and we looked at um, like Montessori schools and stuff like that, which are awesome, but we knew we couldn't afford it. So eventually we just landed on homeschooling and that's what works for us. Uh, it gives us 
freedom to educate our kids the way we want uh, allows them to be creative and explore uh, avenues that are of interest to them, which is probably what I wish that my husband and I had the chance to do when we were younger. It mm-hmm. maybe wouldn't have taken us so long to realize, hey, I like to grow food. You know, maybe we would have known that earlier in life. So our, I guess if you want to put a word on why we're doing what we're doing, it's really freedom. Freedom for, you know, the way we live, to live the way we want, to live with the land, uh, financial freedom, and just the ability to uh, allow our kids to learn at a rate and setting that they're comfortable with. I think that's really neat that you guys figured that out early on. It, it still kind of took us a little longer to figure that one out, at least for me. But you're right to realize the the broken broken school system and why do you have to do things that aren't going to apply to your future? And that's as, as starting now, that which is why we ended up homeschooling which I feel like Nathan was already on that way of thinking way before me, but for you guys to already be thinking that before kids is really neat. Well, yeah. I mean, when we were in, you know, we both graduated from university as well. And, you know, when you're going, it's just the way it is. Yeah. It wasn't until homeschooling and that when that your kind of just thought process changes, when you start thinking about homeschooling with your kids, that you think to yourself, why, why, why do they make you take all these classes? Why do you have to spend all this money on, on things that are seemingly useless to you in the field that you want to go into? And again, another silver lining with COVID might be that this has pulled back the curtain on the educational system and that it's, a lot of it is nonsense and it's a giant business. And that's that helps us though with homeschooling because it makes us realize what we're doing is taking that taking that the bureaucratic side of like the educational system out of the, you know, um, the process for our kids and it's letting them be, you know, creative and user imagination and the whole world kind of opens up to them when you take that, when you take the system out of it. And okay. I've told, I told her the same thing. And we've talked about that. Like, I wish that I had had this opportunity when I was a kid because when I, I remember going to school and it was just this like machine, like getting through each day, I wasn't really, li- I didn't really like being there that much. I had mm-hmm. friends, but it wasn't like, I, I, I didn't feel like I was growing or learning at all. And I think when I was especially a little bit younger, I think, th- I think in my, my mind, there was about 10 jobs you could do in the entire world, <laughs> right. you know, cause they don't open that up to you. Mm-hmm. Like you said, That's true. they'll, that our normal school will never t- tell you and, and push you to go be a farmer right. or a homesteader. Right. I love, I love being outside. I love doing that stuff. I love having my hands in the dirt. We don't do it to your scale by any means. And I'm not saying that, <laughs> but these are the things that I love. I realize that that's the stuff I love doing when I'm not working. Only if I knew that before you could have started at tw- 20 years old and been doing this and become and becoming proficient at it and good at it. And not to say that I can't still do that or somebody can't still do that. You can, you can, you can do the cold turkey thing and like, you know what, this is what I want to do with my life. And I think people should, you know, as long as you, mm-hmm. you have a plan, but the, the uh, like you said, the ability to teach your kids that at an early age, like the whole world is open. You could make money doing all these things. And if it's something you enjoy, don't let this, don't let society tell you that this is, this is kind of the, the, you know, the path you should take because oh, you can make more money doing this maybe, or this is a secure job, which we've all come to find out. There's no such thing anymore. Exactly. Right? It's funny. Yeah. I, I, we talk about COVID and a lot of bad things have happened, but if you are a positive person, I think you should, this should have made, have, have made you a more open-minded individual through this whole thing because there's so much to be learned from this oh, yeah. and it's kind of liberating too it can be liberating like you said well i stay in this job that i hate because it's it's secure is it <laughs> is right. it because nobody thought this would ever happen and it did and people who had secure jobs are unemployed and you guys made a choice to do something you know that you love and not hang your whole life on something that is kind of like you know a smoke screen like it's your husband's job maybe it wasn't as as uh, secure as you thought it was going to be 
and it kind of gave you that little push to follow your dreams. Um, I have no idea where we started this conversation at because I just <laughs> kept talking, but that's <laughs> that's how I've, I, I, I love that you brought that the up. The decision to homeschool is what we were talking about. And, yes. And like having, giving your kids the world essentially, like the, yes. there's so much out there, yeah. There is, right. and that's why we do, we're doing this like series on the reimagined because I think it's really important that people like you guys exist to, to say, look, you don't have to do the normal thing. And I'm doing air quotes for people who aren't watching this. You know, the normal thing isn't necessarily the best thing for your family. Right. And who, and who cares what anybody else thinks and the, the positive results from raising your kids in that fashion or just homeschooling in general to us is like, it's just like, you know, astronomical. Right. Yeah. And to bring it back, uh, there's a point that you made there uh, that I want to kind of talk about to bring it back to homeschooling. You know, we were talking about job security. Um, you know, you can't rely on your job at the, in, during, you know, a pandemic, but you people who go to public school or private schools, you can't rely on that either to educate your children in times like this. And I think that's what we kind of realized early on in our uh, marriage and when we first started having kids is that forever and ever amen you will be your child's biggest advocate and you cannot 100% trust anyone else with your child's education or anything else and I think if if anything for 2020 people really need to realize that there's lots of people that come to me all the time and say I've always thought about homeschooling you know but I just don't know if I can do it uh, I don't have a lot of confidence in that area, and I really hope that this year has just been able to push them over the edge and give them the confidence that they need, because even if you don't think you can do it, you know for sure now that the government cannot promise you that. So you can't, I think it's time for people now who have been teetering on the edge to kind of take back that responsibility and just own it. And it is what it is, you know, you, you, there's going to be, there's lots of bumps in the roads, but, you know, looking back on my school experience, there's lots of times where I think to myself, that could have been better. You know, I turned out okay, but <laughs> that year or that class or that teacher could have been a little bit better. So if, if you're teetering on the edge of whether or not to homeschool this year should really just kind of push you over and, and I hope people give it a try, honestly. Absolutely. Like you said, if, if you love your child, you're going to do what's best for them. And to me, that's always going to win over the system. So oh, yeah. 100% agree with that one. So what does your typical day look like when you're juggling homeschooling and then going out to do the daily chores on your homestead? Because I find um, that <laughs> it's an adventure for sure. Um, and not every day is like perfect and uh, dreamy. You know, we have lots of, I have young kids, so we still have tantrums and, you know, I have an infant who still nurses. So there's lots of interruptions, mm -hmm. but we've really tried to uh, kind of model our homeschool just kind of after what we do with the homestead. So uh, now that we're home together as family, um, we wake up each morning and we usually do a family read aloud. My husband luckily takes that over and reads to the kids and while I'm drinking my couple cups of coffee, because I need those. <laughs> and then we'll do our chores and our homestead chores, feed our animals and take care of things. And we typically don't get started with our actual school lessons until about nine in the morning. I don't know how people get their kids to school before that, I would be late every single day. There's just no way we could do that. <laughs> That's not possible for us. So we really kind of make it flow with our day of, of homeschool. We try to take our lessons outdoors as much as possible. And since I have young learners, I really can't say that we've like settled into a certain method of homeschooling yet or style. But I will say that we change with the seasons. So in spring and summer, we do a lot of stuff outside. Um, we do a lot more nature studies and hikes and just try to be outside as much as possible because that's our growing season uh, and that takes our attention. That's, you know, we do a lot of learning in the garden 
and outside in itself. Uh, and then in the colder months is when we do uh, more of our, you know, and I guess we would say formal instructional uh, stuff with our books and stuff. So we kind of go with the seasons around here and it works for us. Um, so far, I don't have any complaints about it. I do have to uh, make sure to constantly separate myself from uh, my experience in public school growing up because I'm accustomed to going to school five days a week for, you know, eight hours a day and doing this subject and this subject and this subject and reaching a certain standard uh, within a certain amount of time. So I constantly have to, you know, shake that off and just realize that I can do this the way I want to do it, and I need to listen to what they um, are calling for. Um, my oldest son, he does best when he's able to play outside for a little while before we start with our school lessons. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. I mean, it's it's really a, a pretty simple. I just listen to their needs, and they respond better when I give them the freedom that they need. So that's yeah. what we do. <laughs> Ours, our middle child is the same way. And again, we've, we've spoken about this before, but so we have a nine-year-old, a six-year-old and a three-year-old, the nine-year-old, she's in fourth grade. So there are, you know, things where I'm a little more air quotes structured with, I try not to be too structured because I'm like you, I feel like as parents, we have a lot of de-schooling to do more so than the kids. They say the kids that were in school before have to go through this de-schooling process. I think the parents struggle the most with that, that were, that actually went to school. And that is, that's me all the time. Just like you said, I'm constantly trying to just let go because that's what I want for them. And it's so hard to retrain your brain for all that's oh, yeah. ever known. And especially for those of us who went past and went on to college and got the degree and then the job with the degree and all that. So yes, I get it. And I'm, I'm trying to slowly let go of that with time, which I'm getting there. But same thing, like I kind of try to listen to our kids and it's funny because our oldest, she could, she could continue to flourish. I feel like not in a traditional setting, but she does not mind if I had workbooks or if mm -hmm. I said, these are your assignments, go do them. She'd be great. The middle child, the six-year-old boy. Oh my goodness. He's like, he's like on the opposite end of her and I have to cater to that, you know? So it's the same. Like I tell him, you can go out and play. And like my first year of homeschooling, we were starting school at 740. That tells you I could not like <laughs> restructure my brain. I felt like it had to be like this. This year, we're not starting till about 9, 930. And I don't even have a homestead to take care of. <laughs> but I, I like the, the, the relaxed flow of it and not feeling like you're pressured to go run and do school. Like, I don't want it to feel like that. I want it to feel like life. Like you guys go outdoors, get that fresh air, enjoy yourselves. And then we're going to come together at the table for breakfast. And then we're going to start from there and, and make it feel more natural in that sense. But I've seen your videos on YouTube and I, it, I love it because you, you almost always see your kids right there watching everything you guys are doing, which is so neat. Like that is life schooling in itself right there that they're seeing all the things that you guys are doing and you guys especially with going from undeveloped land and having to work your way up that's that's gold right there for them and all the things that they're going to learn from you guys it's really neat oh yeah they'll be they'll be way ahead of us by the time they're our age uh, and that's you know that's awesome that's a gift that i'm happy to give them uh is knowledge in time um and confidence uh, they are, like you said, with us, you know, pretty much 100% of the time. Uh, and as challenging as that can be, it's also extremely rewarding for both us as parents. And then I can see the children just, I mean, they're just ahead of where we were. And just to see their minds work. Uh, for instance, my oldest son is just... He has a different mind. Now, he, the other day, I went out to his construction site and he had made a pond, uh, dammed it up appropriately, placed a pipe in his pond that carried water to another pipe and carried water to another dam. And he had a whole construction site going on. And I said, you know, this is crazy because if you wrote down instructions for me as an adult, 
to create this system, I couldn't do it. But he just does it naturally. His mind is geared that way. And with homeschooling, he has the freedom to be creative and figure that out and explore those avenues. He doesn't know exactly what he's doing and what to call it, but he's doing it and I could never do it. So it's times like that when I start to feel the pressure uh, and start to get down on myself or doubt myself, I'll look at things like that and realize, okay, we're doing okay. I mean, maybe, maybe he's not 100% on the standards that the state sets, um, which is a whole other subject, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, he's advanced in, in other areas and areas that are important to him that will help him in the long run. Yeah. So speaking of like the kids learning along with you and what you just brought up, she had told me that I think you had a post about uh, now that you're trucking water in, <laughs> which um, is probably more of a pain in the butt that you could then you could even explain on this interview. Um, we I'm sorry, you're trucking water in and you said you, you said that uh, you're, you're realizing how much water you guys used to waste and like things that you don't need anymore and just your mindset changes when you have to do stuff like that right so we used to live in New Mexico and water is like a big issue there there's water rights um, only certain parts of the year do they open up the da like the dams to allow water to come to people's properties and you only have a certain part of the year a certain amount of water that you can use um, and I don't know, a couple of years ago, we found a, after we had moved from there, we found an article in the uh, Nas National Geographic magazine that the town that we used to live in, people that were outside of the town's water supply that like were on wells, their wells had all dried up. And they were, there was a the article of a woman who had to drive out into town and fill up jugs of water and bring them back to her house to bathe their kids. And long not to not long story short you you um doing this with your kids that is such a big life lesson because most people never understand what it's like to not turn on the faucet and water to come out and water is really cheap in the end it's like really cheap for us in the, in the united states and very convenient but things like that that your kids are getting to see and then like the elect electricity issue you you guys probably I'm assuming you're not running a generator 24 hours a day right right yeah we've been blessed so far with decent weather to where we haven't had to and we have some solar on the camper but it does make you think <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yes. sure. yeah it does and we've we've gone through just spouts of that with um when we lived in Florida we went through the hurricane um was that two years ago yeah I'm not going to try to remember the name because we've been through so many of them. I don't remember the names anymore, but we lost, we lost power for about a week. We do have a camper. We were living in there. Um, we had a generator we, um, and we were cooking, we were cooking our, our meals out on a camp stove. Mm -hmm. And just that week makes you realize how like important all those things that we have are and how like, um, you take it for granted. You take it for, yeah, you take it for granted, but it also makes you realize ever since we left New, like New Mexico, when someone runs like a faucet and just like leaves it going, it drives me absolutely crazy because mm -hmm. you come to appreciate those things. But those, those lessons that your kids are learning by being around you and, and building this, this, uh, raw piece of property, like those are things are going to take into the future. And they're going to be conscious of issues like that, you know, that most people aren't. Most people, the electricity, just when you turn the switch on, electricity comes out, you don't, and we are, we're not, we're not like, I don't even know, how, I don't know what word I'm trying to use here, but, uh, you know, in, we're not envir environmental crazies or anything. We love the outdoors. <laughs> we love the outdoors and we're very conscious of the environment. I'll put it that way because it's important to us. But like when people flip on the switch, they don't think of, um, you know, the electricity you're wasting, how that electricity is made, where that water comes from, that there's a finite source of that water. All really important things when you're growing up that if you learn when you're young, you take that to, into adulthood and you teach it to your kids one day. And that's kind of how things change. Right. Um, and doing what you're doing is so awesome because they get to see that like firsthand, like, yeah. 
this is as much, this is how much water we have and we're not driving to go get any more anytime soon. So you better watch how much you're using, you know, or there's, there's so much, you know, gasoline or diesel in the generator, you know, that's what we have to use. And um, we're only going to turn it on when we need it. Uh, so, so deal with not having electricity. And that's cool. Cause when they grow up there, it's, it's not just a assumed thing for them. You know, they, they like I said, they don't take it for granted. So I, I love that. I love, like you said, life learning. That's, that's such a major thing. I, I, it's just great. Yeah, and there's a lot of talk about that with people publicly, especially these days. You hear people say, well, kids these days, you know, they're stuck on a tablet or kids these days are stuck on a TV or they don't have any idea where electricity or water comes from. But at the same time, those people think that we are crazy for doing what we're doing. <laughs> so you can't say that if you're not willing to look uh, and actually sacrifice and, and, and make that change and teach them a lesson. Kids will not learn if they're not brought in that situation. You know, just like my husband and I, we have never gone without, uh, you know, an, an ample amount of water or electricity. Uh, you know, even if our parents may have struggled during our childhood, we would have never known it. And, you know, taking responsibility now for the amount of energy that we use is, is just something that we've taken upon ourselves because we want our kids to know. So we can't have it both ways. You know, when people complain about kids these days, uh, they have to realize that in order to change that, you have to expose them. So I guess situations that we're doing, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's crazy, but uh, we hope that they, they grow up and, and they say eventually, thank you for showing me this instead of going the opposite way and, and being, you know, <laughs> crazy about it, but we'll see. <laughs> well, so we, we, we obviously homeschool, we have a camper, we've lived remotely. We are very aware of all of the silly and dumb things that can happen with all those situations, <laughs> living situations. <laughs> so can you just, can you, can you share? We were, we were curious some of the things that you've had to deal with that uh, we probably all find funny on this side that, but that are pain for you, pain for you. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing right now that I personally am dealing with is just laundry. Uh, <laughs> you know, I really am missing my conventional washer and dryer right now, majorly, even though we have taken the time of the last year to condense our garments to what would be a considered minimalistic wardrobe, it's still a lot, you know, we're a family of five. And when I, I'm literally doing laundry by hand right now in the bathtub, and it's taking at least 24 hours or more to dry, we have young children, so we do still have a bed wetter. So these are situations that <laughs> I didn't think of beforehand when we moved to the property. I Maybe I, I thought about it, oh, I can handle that. Well, you know, I'm, I'm cracking a little bit when it comes to the laundry. So those are situations that we're just dealing with. And hopefully we will, we may end up building a building uh, and putting a regular washer and dryer in there before we put the foundation to our home. So we'll just see. <laughs> Priorities though. No, when I saw you post about laundry, I said that to Nathan, I was like, I never would have even thought about the issue with laundry <laughs> living off the well, and that's something that nobody asked either. People will ask, you know, like, well, what are, what are you going to bring for water? And, and of course, how are you going to watch TV, which we don't have TV now. Uh, it's not a big deal for us. But nobody ever asked about the laundry. And truthfully, I didn't think too much about it. And uh, yeah, the laundry is something that's going to have to give sooner than later. <laughs> that's one thing that I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit, but not all the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and with a family of five, we get it too. I laundry here is out of control. How, how do you plan on? How do you? I mean, we so you live in southeastern Ohio. I don't know if we brought that up yet. I don't we, think we did. We live in yeah. I, we probably should have brought that up at the beginning of this. But uh, we live in northeastern Ohio. A little bit different weather. We have the lake effect. You don't. However, close enough to ask this question: How do you plan on drying your clothes in the winter? Well, that's kind of a big deal right now. Right now I've been hanging my clothes outside on a sunny day on a clothes rack 
and they'll take about half the day to dry. Uh, when it's not sunny, like on a day like today, it's raining down here, I would just have to hang them inside the camper and it takes a couple of days to dry. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I have been talking for the last couple of days because he realizes that this is something that uh, talking about sustainability, I'm not gonna be able to do for much longer. <laughs> So we're literally talking about, we're um, adding our solar panel um, collection up. And I think that instead of putting it directly on the house, as soon as we get the house up, we're going to quickly build a structure just like a laundry house uh, and be able to power uh, a washer and dryer at the very least, um, you know, a couple of times a month so that I can at least have a little bit of a break with the laundry because that's just <laughs> something that's, and I didn't think was going to be so hard. <laughs> the break, the breaking point. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when we lived in New Mexico, we had a clothesline mm -hmm. as well. We did have a dryer, but it was super old, mm -hmm. and it actually didn't work for a while. Didn't work for a while. I think it to. I think it to run it like five times in a row to get it like mildly dry. <laughs> so we would use that clothesline all the time. So, I mean, something all our. I think all of our grandparents pretty much did, but nowadays it's most people don't have never used a clothesline, I don't think. So yeah, we, we know the struggle of drying clothes on a clothesline. And because we get hard winters in where we lived in New Mexico. So even then it would- We couldn't do it outside. It was too outside, damp, no. yeah. I, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be fine if it was summertime, um, you know, and I may even uh, continue to have a clothesline in the summertime, um, just to be conscious about the energy that I'm using. But going into winter, it's just probably not gonna work. <laughs> So with all this being said, what is it about this lifestyle that makes it all worth it to you guys? Seriously, and I've probably said this before, maybe even while we're sitting here, but it's really just the freedom. Um, I think freedom is something that a lot of people have taken for granted uh, up until this year. Um, we've had a lot of things change, uh, but really we just want our entire family, our children and, and us to just be able to embrace the freedoms that and the rights that we were given here as Americans and live off of the land, uh, live passionately. Um, and that's what that's what we want to do. We want to work closely with nature. We want to grow our food. Uh, we want to raise our family the way that we see fit in the way that um, we feel is necessary for them to thrive. Um, and so any sacrifice that we have to make in order to continue that lifestyle, we will do it. And if that means that we have to haul our water for a couple of years, then we're going to haul our water for a couple of years. Maybe not sacrifice the laundry, but <laughs> other things, I can make a list. <laughs> I saw one of your um, other YouTube videos where your husband was bring, talking about the water supply. And I guess he said, some people have told you guys, like, you know, what you guys are doing is really hard to bring mm -hmm. your water supply. But I love how he said that it's just like a temporary obstacle to meet this, the goal of building a debt-free home. Um, and if it is this temporary thing for however long um, that it was worth it to you guys and that to him, he was saying it was actually harder to consider the alternative option, which, which is working 50 plus hours for a, uh, for a job or an employer that you don't like or enjoy at all. And exactly. And, and that's how you can tell that we were um, in a really nasty situation before, you know, we're willing to sacrifice all this convenience and all these amenities in order just to have time together and have the freedom that we so badly yearn for. And that's because, um, and it might not be that way for everybody. We just, my husband and I were not career people. Uh, we never did settle in a career that we were super passionate about. We're passionate about our lifestyle, just not a career. And so for years, he just fought the good fight. Uh, and um, we just finally gave in, you know, the stress of his job uh, and kind of balancing that with our lifestyle was not working. His health actually declined greatly from the stress of his job. And then, you know, it came into the fact that, you know, financially, it's really not secure, especially in this, this year. So that's kind of what separated us and, and made us realize we need to make this, this jump. And 
like you said, you know, people, people, as soon as we tell them what we're doing, they'll say, well, that's so hard, or how are you going to do that? Or I can't rough it like that. And maybe you can't, but for us, the alternative was way worse. And, and, and that was dreadful, you know, thinking about that there was no light at the end of the tunnel for us was just, it wasn't an option after so long. If we would have continued down that path, it would have, like you mentioned earlier, dismantled our family. Um, you know, when when one person is unhappy uh, and with this job, and there's also financial stress involved, family strain. I mean, eventually something has to to give, and we probably would have discussed, you know, terrible alternatives like divorce or, you know, something like that. I just can't imagine. We couldn't both keep continue down the path that we were on. We had to make a big change and that involves sacrifice like we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So real, real quick, I do you, so you homestead, do you, is that a source of income for you guys? It's not right now in the past. I've, uh, when I have my big gardens in the summer, I'll, I'll sell some produce and stuff here and there. Uh, but it really hasn't been source of income. Um, we're hoping that maybe our YouTube channel one day will, we're very new to that. Um, but we do have a YouTube channel that's featuring our house build and our homesteading adventures. It's called Honey, I'm Homestead. Uh, we'd love for that to be, you know, just a, a small source of income one of these days. Uh, but for the, for, uh, the time being and from years past, we've relied on his income. Um, and he's, he's kind of took one for the team all these years <laughs> and dealt with all that stress. But now we are really just trying to be focused on, um, keeping our finances down as small as we can so that we can be more sustainable and self-sufficient. And just, I'm just curious, are you, is that, is that in the future plans for you guys to make a profit off your like farming? We would love to eventually we still, um, which we, we kind of started small little avenues. We got into pigs recently and we've bred, um, a couple of our Berkshire gilts, um, artificial insemination. So we're new to that, but we would love to start a small stream that way. Uh, we're also conscious at the same time to keep things uh, very small so that we can keep it controlled in the environments that we, uh, you know, prefer, but we would be very open to that at the same time. So we'll just see how things, you know, progress over the years, but we're all about, um, you know, changing with the seasons and any, um, we pour us, ourselves into any um, skill that we think could possibly uh, become a, you know, a profit eventually in the long run. We'll sure. see how that goes. <laughs> well, the funny thing is the less you need, the less you need. So, you know, you guys got rid of all your big bills. Mm -hmm. You don't have, you, like you said, you don't have to worry about needing so much anymore, which is a beautiful thing. You can focus oh, on yes. your family. <laughs> Yeah, for the first time ever, and it's 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 such a weight off our sh our shoulders to not to realize it's actually taken us probably up until the last week to realize <laughs> that we are truly we truly do have financial freedom and and we have control over um, from this point forward where we go. You know, since we were married, we never had control of that. We we got married very young. Um, I was only twenty years old. And we were both still in college when we married. So as soon as we married, we had, we started out with debt, uh, you know, immediately with our student loans. So we've never had the freedom to say, what do you want to do? <laughs> it's a funny thing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> well, before we wrap this up, can you leave us with one piece of wisdom for those who are dreaming of this lifestyle of freedom, but say that it's not possible for them. Sure. Yeah. I've learned this one, uh, the hard way. And I would say, you know, to anyone who that's that if this resonates with you, this lifestyle or any lifestyle for that matter, and people tell you, you can't do it, or you're constantly finding excuses to hold off. You just can't, there's always a way to do it. But at the same time, you have to realize that there will be sacrifices and you know from beginning to end you're constantly going to sacrifice something convenience whether it be your hole in your water like we are up there right now or maybe you're sacrificing um face value you know maybe you're going from one lifestyle to a drastic change to another and 
you have to realize that uh, there will be some people who question you, um, who doubt you along the way and tell you that you can't do it. But if I really truly believe that if somebody is a driven person and they really want something bad enough, then it does not matter what is in your way, you will go for it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to homestead or you want to uh, get closer to your food or you want to homeschool your kids, you really just have to be willing to sacrifice all those obstacles in your way and just go for it. And if you want to do that, then eventually you'll learn maybe the hard way. You know, we kind of crashed and burned uh, for a little while on our on our journey here. And it took kind of that big crash, that big financial crisis to wake us up and say, hey, we got to do this for real. And eventually you'll come to your senses. And if you want it, you'll go get it. Mm -hmm. Love that. All right. Well, where can our listeners find you? Well, uh, <laughs> like I said, we started our new YouTube channel. Uh, we're kind of new on there and I'm learning ins and outs of that, but you can find us at Honey on Homestead and that features our house build and all of our homesteading adventures. And then I have my own personal account on Instagram. It's uh, Farm to Table Mama and I feature everything there, including homeschooling and just the ins and outs of my daily life. So that's where you can find us right now. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and taking uh, an hour drive to find internet so you could do this with us. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Yes, we'll put all, we'll put all your links in, uh, in the show notes. And uh, I have no doubt you guys' YouTube channel is going to take off because it's, uh, it's really fun watching what, you, what, you're, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. I appreciate you guys following along. appreciate you having me here. Nathan, I appreciate your service to the country. Thank you for that. And your family sacrifice and everything that you guys are doing. So... Keep cool. at it. You too, and we'll be following along. Have a good rest of your day. Sounds great. Thank you guys. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See you later.